Voters will have a chance to have their voices heard as polls are now open for Election Day in the mid-state. And to give us a rundown of the day's biggest races, News Channel 5's Cuthbert Langley joins us live. Good morning. Hey, good morning, Amy. Yeah, the polls opened up here just a couple of minutes ago. We've seen a couple of folks head into the main library down here right in the heart of downtown Nashville. You can see a couple of political signs behind me, but here's the story of the day. This sample ballot is four pages long. We're talking 43 local races, tons of other state is, uh, issues as well that are going to be on the ballot. So it's going to be a jam packed day at the polls. Today is the general election for local offices like county commission and the school board. But for those statewide races, it's the primary election, so voters are going to be whittling down who they're going to pick from come November. Now, those state and national legislators are also on the ballot, along with Governor Bill Haslam, who faces a pretty jam-packed primary this year so far, with th uh, faces three Republicans on that ballot. Now, here's a look at what will perhaps be some of those big races. We've heard his name a lot. We know him. Incumbent Senator Lamar Alexander is facing a pretty big challenge by primary uh, challenger uh, State Representative Joe Carr, former State Representative. I should say. Carr hoping to pull some sort of an Eric Cantor like upset today. We'll see if that happens. And then in Tennessee's fourth district, the scandal plagued incumbent Scott, Scott Desjardins. All we know his name as well. He's facing off against State Senator Jim Tracy. As we all know, Desjardins survived the last election despite reports of extramarital affairs and his divorce becoming public. So it'll be very interesting to see what he can do here today. But again, it's really recommended that you get a chance to look at the sample ballot before heading into the booth this morning so you have some sort of an idea of what you're going to be voting for. Of course, the polls will be open until 7 o'clock. We also have an app on our website, newschannel5.com, under the news links page that will be able to help you pick out where the best spot is for you to vote. So, of course, have your ID with you and be prepared to spend a couple of hours or so preparing to vote this morning. We're live here in downtown Nashville. We'll send it back to you guys in the studio. Thank you, Cuthbert. Stay with News Channel 5 for all your primary election coverage. You're going to find updates online at newschannel5.com and our special on-air coverage begins on the plus at 7 o'clock and watch News Channel 5 at 10 for the full wrap. We do have some breaking news here on the plus this morning. A man wanted for a South Nashville murder almost five years ago has finally been nabbed. Police have been searching for 27 year old Juan Vargas since 2010. He's accused of shooting another 27 year old Santos Reyes at a bar on Haywood Lane. His brother Adolfo Vargas was caught right after the shooting. Vargas is now charged with criminal homicide. Police think he may have been hiding out in California or Mexico for the past few years. New this morning, a violent outburst from an angry customer. It happened at David Discount Tobacco and Beer on Lafayette here in Nashville. A clerk told the suspect to wait in line to buy cigarettes, but he got angry and left the store and came back shooting. Now you can see that front window there was riddled with bullets. No one inside was hit. Police were able to pick up the suspect just a few blocks away carrying a handgun, which they say is likely the one used in the shooting. New this morning, Amy, one woman facing charges after a domestic dispute escalated into arson. It's, this was the scene around midnight over on Fane Street. Crews tell us that Jeanette Covington threw something at her estranged husband's home, which caused it to go up in flames. Other people were inside, including kids. They all made it out all right. The couple had already been arrested once during the day for domestic assault. Police say it's pretty unusual for something to get out of hand so quickly. There's a certain time that they're held when it's domestic violence charges. Um, so we do that for a cooling off period. It's one of the reasons that law's in place. So, um, but I, I would say to this extent, yeah, it would be unusual for something to occur that quickly after being released. Jeanette is facing one count of aggravated arson. We're told other charges may be coming. The fire marshal will also be going to this apartment that went up in flames overnight around 3 o'clock this morning, about four hours ago at the complex on Murfreesboro Pike. Crews got there super fast and got the flames out with no problems. No other units were damaged and no one was hurt. A Texas fugitive was captured in Montgomery County. Deputies tried to pull over Donald Brown for following too closely to another vehicle. After stopping him, deputies say he jumped out and started running. He put up a fight, but they were finally able to take him into custody. The 34-year-old is now facing several charges here in addition to his capital murder charge in Texas. And one of the TBI's top 10 most wanted has been captured. Lysandra Webster, also known as Precious, was taken into custody yesterday. She was wanted for 
for aggravated kidnapping and aggravated assault. Investigators say back in July, she used Facebook to lure someone into a robbery. They say she forced the victim at gunpoint to an ATM and emptied out his bank account. And have you seen this man? Smyrna police say he's the guy that swiped more than $1,000 worth of stuff from Walmart on Enon Springs Road East. And we're told some of the items he took were a surround sound speaker system, a couple of security camera systems. He even stole some pillows and an oil pan. He hit every department apparently in the store. If you know who he may be, call 615-267-5434. Another small plane from the mid-state has crashed in Alabama. That plane went down yesterday at the Jack Edwards Airport near Gulf Shores, Alabama. Four people were on board and no one was seriously hurt. We're told the plane took off from Dixon Wednesday morning. It's registered to Bluebird Flying LLC. A volunteer firefighter was killed in the line of duty while working alongside his mother. It's an update to a story we first brought you as breaking news yesterday. It happened on I-65 South near Elizabethtown, Kentucky. The Glendale firefighters, a mother and a son, were hit by a semi-truck while trying to put out a van fire. Jonathan French was killed and his mother Lisa was airlifted to the hospital. The truck driver was not hurt, but no word yet of any charges will be filed.